the second token of decision uh, is secure message authentication across the related attack by Shiraj, Natasha Artia, and uh, Tabla Boy. This work is about uh, secure message authentications, and uh, the address model that we consider here is in a related key framework. So the outline of the talk will be, I'll, I'll give a very quick background for the, what exactly we mean by related key attack here. And what, what is that uh, the, the model we follow for the security of message authentication codes. And then we show the, some attacks on, on well-known Macs. And then uh, we'll have some look at the previously known results and what are the related key functions that were derived, uh, the related key deriving functions that were considered in previous uh, results. And then uh, the main results and the construction will follow. So in a related key framework, the adversary is not only allowed to uh, query the uh, encryption or the function, uh, of course, I mean a key function here, it's, uh, it, it will also be able to make a query with some modified key. And this uh, modification function that is defined by the adversary, that means it is allowed to change some say, key bits and then allowed, uh, allowed to make a query to the encryption or to say. So apart from the, if the function is f, then apart from making the normal queries, we'll also have some file, which is uh, changing the key bit, and actually getting the answer for the modified key also. And this class of functions, it's well known as uh, related key deriving functions, and it can include from very simple functions to complicated uh, functions also, like uh, in case of AES, uh, related key attacks, they've used quite uh, complicated functions like round key, uh, some some uh, derived function from the uh, round key generation function. So if you look at some previous results, there have been very uh, extensive works on this uh, related key attacks on ciphers or Mac. It was first introduced by PM and then followed by many attacks on block ciphers, many and even uh, I think till date we are having many related key attacks on well uh, on the recently proposed ciphers. So the question here we try to address is not exactly that uh, okay just to consider the related key security of a message authentication code, but so suppose you have a block cipher and you have related key attack on that, so. If I use this block cipher to construct a message authentication code, what can you tell about the security of the message authentication codes really? Do we really need the <coughs> key 
Sigrian MS, which has been considered before. And uh, even in a theoretical treatment by Beller and Cash, they have considered uh, that how, how they can construct a related key secure Sigrian MS function. But the question we try to address here is, is it, is it really required to have such a strong criteria when you are considering uh, a MAC? So, as it turns out that it's, it's not really required to have such a strong criteria. In fact, we can live with all these uh, ciphers which has related key attacks, but as long as you cannot, you cannot predict, or the cipher cannot be fortunate in the sense that uh, if you consider the uh, cipher as a key function, you can make related key queries, but you cannot forge the cipher. That means you cannot predict uh, on a message with the unknown key. So let's uh, look at uh, the, map, the security that we consider for message authentication codes here. So you query uh, the oracle with, with some message with the unknown key. And you can make any number of queries, and at the end you come up with a forgery. And the, the forgery that, uh, the message on which the forgery is given, that should not be in the query list. So next, what exactly we mean by um, key security of a message authentication code? What exactly is our model here? So again, the adversary is allowed to make a query with some uh, key function, with some chosen message. Of course, and look at the function try. As I said, it will be chosen by the adversary. And after, say, some few number of queries, it gives some message, m star, on which it gives some forgery. Now here we face two different things. This forgery m star, you can have either, you can restrict the adversary that it, it may not be like as in a Mac, it may not be in the query list. That means the adversary has never queried it with the unknown secret key. Or we can have a criteria that it, it has not been queried with the modified key. So depending on that, we have two notions of related key security of MAC here. So the, the second one we call as the weak notion of related key security. So if you look at the RKD class in previously, uh, in previously known results, everywhere the, this related uh, key deriving classes were taken to be very strong. They are taken as claw free and they are, they are <coughs> going to be this, this class of functions has to be unpredictable and it may not be even constant functions. But as it turns out that in, in, in case of a message authentication course, the restriction is uh, not so much. In fact, if you have a constant function, the, all the message authentication codes which are secured, they are inherently secured against the related key attack also. So that is, if, if you have a map and if, if it is related key, then it is actually related key unfortunately against a constant RKD class. And this this proof is very simple. If you if you say consider an adversary which actually can give under constant function a forgery to the to the Mac, then you can have an adversary which will actually go and forge the Mac itself when the function is just constant. So this turns out that in case of uh, related key security of MAC, we do not really need such uh, strong conditions of related key deriving class. So we can exclude the constant functions. That means we, we, we can allow constant function queries uh, to the adversary. So first, let's have a look at what are, uh, what are the attacks that we can uh, give on the existing MAC. So the, on XCBC, it's pretty simple to give an attack. So here at the last at the last block, you see there is an independent key XOR going on. And if if I if I make a query with a simple XOR of the key, say K1 XOR some date or some I, then this XOR uh, with that query, I can actually make this I shifted to here and I can have a forgery, valid forgery. So it's, it's really following this relation. So the adversary can make a query like this, 
with a very simple reductive derivative function, and it will come up with a forgery uh, which, which looks like this. And by the definition, it's a valid forgery because this 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 message has never this message has never occurred in the query list of the adversary. So, and the, and the class here chosen is it's pretty simple. It's just a XOR class. Just with one class of related irrelevant function, it can give a forgery. So it turns out that XCVC is not related to secure. As it turns out, even in, in case of TMAC, the last block is following the same kind of criteria that is the last block is doing some linear pre washing with the key. Some linear, <coughs> not exactly XOR, but it can be transformed into a linear pre widening of key. And so you can have a similar kind of attack with, uh, with a little modification of this MS. Then we, then we look at um, uh, these this two maps, say ECBC and FCBC. And as it turns out that if you do not have any restrictions on the uh, RKD class, of course, uh, you can have constant functions. But uh, in, in ECBC and FCBC, we actually have two keys instead of one key construction, like CBC map. So if you if you allow them to transform in any way, say you the first uh, the K zero and K one these two functions, if if I look at it component wise, and if I allow it's a say K zero if I can map it to K one if the adversary is allowed to do that, then it can turn this entire map into CBC like construction, and it's very easy to give a attack. So what what is the next step that since we have attack against some max, the so next idea will be to look at okay, how to make it secure, or does there exist any secure MAC construction? So instead of trying to look at a new construction, first we try to actually look at the existing constructions, that whether we can, whether whether they are secure against some RKD class or not. But in order to show that it's secure by a reduction technique, we we need some technical tools, which uh, which is uh, which I will describe in the the following slide. So first one is we need uh, idea of this ICTP or hash function. So it really turns out this this stands for the identity collision and target pre image resistant hash function. So what what exactly is meant by identity collision identity collision resistant hash? It's in a reality framework, again, the, the, the adversary is making query with, with some related key deriving function. And say, after a few queries, it can have a collision. So it, it, it gets some message MJ, which turns out to be the last query. And it can give a collision on some message I, which was queried with some related key deriving function previous. So if it can be, give a message MJ like this, then the adversary wins this game. So that that is how identity collision resistant hash is defined. And similarly, we define what a target pre image resistant hash function. So in this game, the adversary first defines, first declares a set of uh, set of ZI. So these these are in the in the range of the hash function, and of course a, a related uh, set phi. And then it makes query, as in before. And then it give, then as a forgery or here as a pre-image, it gives a message M star so that the the, the, the mapping under H it exactly matches with one of these things. If it happens, then this adversary works. So with this hash function, what we can do is that if if H is an ICTP hash function, and F is uh, say weak relatively unforgeable. That means even uh, the adversary is not allowed to make a uh, not allowed to produce a, a forgery, which it has queried with a related key deriving function also. So that's the second criteria that uh, that I described in the security model of uh, Mac. Then this this function that means this uh, F which is defined here with k1 and if I hash it with this thing then it turns out that th this this function is actually unforgeable again uh, in a related key 7 against chosen message data now here what are these wi's wi's are well known as uh, 
key fingerprinted, and there's a very well-known idea which has been used uh, in a related key uh, to, to show that something is related key secure in a, even in the case of PR. The idea is that if you consider this function, if you take a set of values set of w1 to wd, then against against this set of values, you cannot find any collision with with f under related key under related key queries. That means f of k k1 w1 will not be equal to f of phi k1 w i for for any phi. But it will happen only for this set of values. But one thing I'd like to stress here that in the previous constructions they used a, a very very strong criteria that it will not happen against uh, against any any key. So instead of k1, if you consider some k prime, then it will also not collide. But here we restrict ourselves only to the uh, modified keys according to this this. Uh, We restrict ourselves only against this uh, under uh, the modification under this uh, five class of functions. So next, so how to this construction is really a very very generic construction, but it's 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 very similar to uh, one of the previous proposed construction. But what is the difference here? In the previous proposed construction, as I said, that they assume something very strong. As a result, they had to restrict the, the domain of this uh, uh, range of this hash function so that it uh, does not have a collision, it does not result in a collision uh, in case of f when we try to launch a related k attack. So this, this was again uh, the same, same uh, by the same authors, Miller and Cash, they proposed because they were trying to prove it uh, PRF in a related key, uh, related key model. And they assume something very strong, but in our case, since we are trying to prove it in a in a different framework, that means we do not need a peer assumption. It turns out that even even much weaker conditions are uh, sufficient to, to show that this this function is really really secure. So next, what we do is that this is. From the general construction, we try to go into detail, and we try to we prove that the, uh, we try to prove in a in a reduction way that this function is in fact secure. And this is done in two ways. First, we show that how to construct this this hash function. <coughs> that means this this ICTQ hash function. So if you have some say directly unforgeable function which is of fixed length, that means you can take it as any block cipher also. Which is, for which you have some related key, but it may not be related key, uh, it may not be related key PRF, but it's enough to be related key unfortunately. So the first step will be from from a fixed input length uh, ICTPR, uh, ICTPR hash uh, compression function, or say hash, we try to construct a variable input length hash function. And in the next step, we show how to construct this fixed input length. ICTPR from the minimal assumption that is you have an RK unforgeable function. It's a fixed input. <coughs> so for this we define a mode of operation. So the mode of operation looks something like this. That suppose you have say L L blocks of messages, then you you uh, the, the, each of the message block length has to be n minus one. You append it with the Previously with a zero, make it of length n, and then go through with, with this empty mode of uh, construction. And at the end, we put the length and also this thing to, to this really becomes handy when we try to prove that this is actually secure in our model. So it turns out that if 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 this h if each of these h prime if they are actually ICTPR, then our under this mode of operation, this entire function is also ICTPR hash function. And here also the proof is not not <coughs> very complicated. If, if because if you if you assume there is some collision, then there has to be a collision either here or IB. And you can by reduction you can actually show that if you have uh, an adversary for this entire thing, then you can actually have an adversary 
for H prime, which will break either it will produce a target image or it will uh, it will come up with some identity condition under related data. So next we we try to we try to go to the next step. That means we ha now actually have a <coughs> domain extension. That means from fixed input length we can produce variable input length. So how to how to have this fixed input? So for that we take <coughs> The, the, we start with the minimal thing, that means now you have this function which is which may not be RK PRM but RK unforgeable. And with, with this very simple operation that if you XR it under two different keys, then it turns out that this this thing is actually fixed input length uh, ICD PRM as function. And of course here the assumption is uh, that we, we have to have this identity fingerprint which which was in the generic construction before. Now, if you look at the the hash uh, the, the MAC constructions which are which are already been proposed, which have been proposed uh, in different different works previously, it turns out we already have a compression function like this, which is which is n cipher CVC. So what n cipher CVC does is that it, it actually exhorts two different block ciphers and it chains in a MD mode. But here you can, in, in a inside of CVC mode, these are really messages. But in our case, we, we have to make it, instead of making it of the same block length as the decipher, we just make it n minus 1 and we just prepend it with a, with a 0. And everything is as, uh, as, pre as it was in the previous slide, that uh, our mode of functions, so the messages are exactly like that. So because of because of the rest of the previous theorem, it turns out that this, this mode, this modified structure of N-cipher CVC is actually secure under direct E mode. So next is we try to look at that okay, if you this 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 is a construction which was uh, which was proposed in a previous form by Beller and Cash, where they assume something very strong that it is uh, it is actually this this hash used by them was actually collision resistant instead of instead of our hash assumption, and it turns out that it actually preserves this this hash function actually with, with the function f it actually preserves the uh, preserves the uh, related structure or related the unforgeability structure of the of the underlying function. That means again, if you start with the related the unforgeable function, you'll get a related the unforgeable map, and we also give to to uh, construction depending on depending on lineage assumption here. So this is this is just just to show that okay there this construction also works but again th this hash has really very weird looking range because you cannot uh, you cannot allow all the values to be in the range of this hash function because of the construction. So to summarize that what what we do is that we first define this uh, what exactly is meant by the hierarchy security. We actually prove that there exists relatively secure, relatively secure map under a reduction technique, of course. That if you can, if you can come up with an adversary which breaks the relatively security of map, then the underlying function you are using it will also not be secure. So this is kind of a contradiction technique. So if you are starting with some any relatively secure, relatively unfortunate function, you can construct a relatively unfortunate map. And for that, we use this mode, our mode of operations. And one important thing is that the condition of the relatively class is not really very strict here. In fact, it, the, it works for any relatively class in our case. I mean, you can prove it unfortunately. Thank you for your